Today, we're taking a look at AMD's new Zen 5 based Ryzen Threadripper 9000 series, packing up to 64 cores with 128 threads and 80 PCI Express 5.0 lanes. Now, this series has been split into two segments. One has been classified as high end desktop, known simply as Threadripper 9000, while the other is more workstation focused. And AMD refer to those parts as Threadripper Pro 9000 WX. Now, of course, we're interested in the high-end desktop parts, which are considerably more affordable, though they're still pretty hideously expensive in their own right. But before we get to that... Today's video is sponsored by Gigabyte's GeForce RTX 50 series gaming laptops. The Aorus Master 18 and 16 are super high-performance beasts with up to RTX 5090 laptop graphics, stunning 240Hz HDR displays, and top-end features like a PCIe Gen 5 SSD and Wi-Fi 7. The Aero X16 Copilot Plus PC is the perfect choice for gamers and creators on the go with a portable chassis, up to RTX 5070 laptop graphics, and a high-resolution Pantone validated display. The gaming A16 and A16 Pro are also available with up to RTX 5080 laptop graphics, wind force cooling and overall great bang for buck. With NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics you have access to superb performance and cutting edge features like DLSS4 transformer model upscaling and 4x multi-frame generation. To learn more about Gigabyte's RTX 50 series gaming laptops, check the links in the description. Okay, so the pricing structure for these new Threadripper 9000 parts mimics that of the previous 7000 series. That means the 24 core version, so the 9960X, costs $1,500 US. Then for $2,500 US, you have the 32 core 9970X. And finally, a cool $5,000 US for the 9980X, which of course packs the full 64 cores. Now on hand for review, I have the 9970X and 9980X, meaning we are skipping over the 24 core model. As I noted earlier, the Threadripper 9000 series, like the 7000 series before it, is split into two platforms. And that means whereas the 9000 series offers up to 64 cores, the Pro 9000 WX series goes up to 96 cores, if you're willing to spend just shy of $12,000 US for just the CPU. The Pro WX series also supports more PCIe lanes and more memory channels. But I'm not going to be covering the six Pro models. We haven't reviewed those before and we won't be testing them today. Instead, I'll just quickly show you the specifications and we'll talk about the models that we will be testing. AMD released the Threadripper 7000 series back in November of 2023, so almost two years ago now. And with it, they introduced the new 4844 pin STR5 socket which unfortunately was in no way backwards compatible with the 4094 pin SWRX8 socket used by the previous Threadripper 5000 series. Along with the 7000 series, AMD also released two new chipsets. The WRX90 chipset exclusively supports the Pro CPUs, while the TRX50 chipset supports both Pro and HEDT parts, though it will limit the functionality of the Pro models. As noted earlier, the key difference between the high-end desktop and workstation-focused Threadripper models is PCI Express lane count and memory channels. As an example, if you were to use a Pro CPU on a WRX90 board, you would have the full 128 PCI Express 5.0 lanes available and 8-channel memory support. But if you were to install a Pro CPU on a TRX50 motherboard, you will be limited to 80 usable PCIe lanes and quad-channel memory. Now, when it comes to memory capacity, the Threadripper 9000 series processors can accommodate up to 8 channel, 2 terabytes worth of memory on WRX90 motherboards using 256 gigabyte RDIMMs, or up to 4 channels with 1 terabyte capacity of memory on the TRX50 boards. Both platforms do officially support DDR5 6400 in either single or dual rank configurations, up from DDR5 5200 from the previous Threadripper 7000 series. It's also worth noting that these new Threadripper CPUs don't use your typical DDR5 memory. Both platforms use registered DIMMs, so you will require DDR5 RDIMM, LRDIMM, or 3DS RDIMM. Please note RDIMMs are in no way compatible with conventional unbuffered or unregistered memory, so the sort of memory used by AM5 processors, for example. Now, for testing, AMD has provided a 128GB kit of GSkills F5, 6400 R32 39 F32 
GQ4-T5N T5 Neo memory, which costs around $900 US. I certainly do wish it had a better name, but that is the exact kit that we're testing today with, and it is worth noting there are a few versions with a slightly different arrangement of numbers and letters. Now, the CPUs that we'll be reviewing today include the 9980X and 9970X, so let's quickly touch on these parts. The Threadripper 9980X comes in at $5,000 US, offers 64 cores, 128 threads using 8 CCDs, and a single I.O. die. In total, there's 256 megabytes of L3 cache, 48 PCIe 5.0 lanes with 24 PCIe 4.0 lanes, and 4 memory channels. The cores run at a base clock of 3.2 GHz with a 5.4 GHz boost clock, and like all Threadripper 9000 series parts, the TDP has been set at 350 watts. Then we have the Threadripper 9970X, which is essentially cut in half, with just 4 CCDs, giving it 32 cores with 64 threads and 128 megabytes of L3 cache, and as a result, the price has been cut in half to $2,500 US. Now, because the TDP remains the same, at 350 watts, the base clocks have been dramatically increased to 4 gigahertz, though the same 5.4 gigahertz boost clock still applies. Then there's the 9960X, which, as I said earlier, unfortunately we don't have it, but it's a 24 core, 48 thread model that will sell for $1,500 US. So that's the new Threadripper 9000 series high end desktop lineup. Now it's time to go over the test system specs and then jump into the results. For testing, we're using the ASUS Pro WS TRX50 Sage Wi Fi motherboard, which has been armed with 128GB of DDR5 6400CL32 memory and the GeForce RTX 4090, as I'm yet to update all our data with the RTX 5090, but really for the majority of this testing, the GPU isn't used anyway. Then for cooling, we have the Silverstone XE360 TR5 360mm AIO. This is a $380 US cooler that has been designed specifically for the TR5 socket. And then finally, everything was installed and tested inside the excellent Be Quiet Light Base 900FX case. Okay, let's get into the data. First up, we have the Cinebench multi-core test, and here the 9980X is extremely impressive, scoring 6,632 points, which is an 18% improvement over the previous generation 7980X. That is a much larger improvement than you might expect given the Zen 5 9700X was just 2% faster than the Zen 4 7700X, and the 9700X clocks 2% higher. Now in this example, the 9980X did clock on average 7% higher than the 7980X, so the increase in frequency will account for some of this improvement, but the rest is down to IPC gains. I guess the question is, why aren't those apparent Zen 5 IPC gains visible when comparing the 9700X and 7700X? And it's also worth pointing out that the 9800X 3D is seen here to be 24% faster than the 7800X 3D. And previously, this led us to speculate, theorize, that keeping the same I.O. die used for the Zen 4 generation for use with Zen 5 was limiting performance in many of these tests, but the larger L3 cache capacity of the 9800X 3D was helping to mitigate the effects of the IO die bottleneck. Adding to that theory is the fact that these Threadripper CPUs use a completely different IO die, a much larger die that provides considerably more bandwidth. So could this be the reason for why the Zen 5 architecture looks much more impressive in this Threadripper example? I'm obviously not 100% sure, as I said this is purely speculation based on the evidence we have so far, but it is another thing that points at the old I.O. die being a problem for Zen 5 desktop CPUs. Anyway, getting back to the 9980X, 18% is a big improvement, and I should note for the same test AMD themselves are reporting a 16% uplift, which is in the ballpark of what we're seeing here. And then we have the 32 core 9970X, that was a little less impressive, just an 11% increase in this example when compared to the previous generation 7970X, but still, that's a solid increase. Now when it comes to power consumption, the 9000 series is very similar to the 7000 series, which means we're looking at a reasonable improvement in efficiency here. And interestingly, we're compared to Intel's Core Ultra 9 25K, 
the 9980X consumed 45% more power for 163% more performance. Now we're looking at an 8-10% to improvement in single core performance for these new 9000 series Threadripper parts, which makes them about as fast as a Zen 4 processor for this type of workload. So while interesting information, it's not overly useful given the entire point of a 32 or 64 core part is to use a lot of cores, ideally 32 or 64. Blender Open Data can eat up all of those cores, and here we're looking at a 13% performance increase for the 9980X over the 7980X, and then just a 6% increase for the 9970X over the 7970X. Also, when compared to the 9950X 3D, the 9970X is 85% faster in this test. Next up, we have the 7-Zip File Manager Compression Test. Here we're looking at a fairly mild 8% gain for the 9980X over its predecessor, with a smaller 6% gain for the 9970X. Not exactly amazing gains there, but given the 7700X was faster than the 9700X, the Threadripper CPUs are doing much better. Then when measuring decompression performance, we see that the 9980X was 12% faster than the 7980X, while the 9970X was 4% faster than the 7970X. So the gains so far have been a lot less impressive for the 32 core part. Adobe Photoshop 2025 is an example of a workload that is generally very lightly threaded, certainly not requiring more than an 8-core processor, and therefore the Threadripper CPUs perform very poorly here as they are heavily underutilized. Adobe Premiere Pro can be much more CPU intensive, though it does depend heavily on the workload. Using the Puget Systems benchmark, the 9970X was 11% faster than the 7970X, which is the biggest gain we've seen for the 32 core part since looking at the Cinebench data. Oddly though, the 64 core 9980X was just 3% faster than its predecessor here. Now, Threadripper CPUs are not designed or intended for gaming, and obviously you wouldn't buy one if you were primarily gaming. The 9800X 3D is a significantly better gaming CPU that costs significantly less. But an interesting test that I will be adding to our CPU reviews is a shader compilation benchmark, and in this example, I'm using Dragon Age The Valgard. Here we see that the Core Ultra 9 285K takes 166 seconds to complete the task, while the 9800X 3D is a little bit slower, taking 173 seconds. But both were completely blown out of the water by the 9950X 3D, which took just 116 seconds, reducing the completion time by 33% when compared to the 9800X 3D. But the Threadripper CPUs, they're much faster again. Though be aware this test only utilizes around 32 cores at most, meaning that the 9980X and 9970X delivered similar performance at just over 80 seconds, making them around 30% faster than the 9950X 3D, which is an impressive result. And here's a look at how the shader compilation benchmark behaves on the 9970X. When verifying shaders, we saw an average clock frequency of 5 GHz with an average core utilization of 59%, resulting in an average core usage of 27 cores. And this is why the 32 core and 64 core Threadripper CPUs delivered very similar results. Just very quickly, here's a look at some gaming benchmarks, basically confirming that, yeah, you can game on these Threadripper CPUs, and while performance is acceptable, it's far from the best possible gaming experience. And in some examples, such as Cyberpunk 2077, the performance is actually quite poor, though certainly acceptable and very much playable, but obviously you wouldn't buy a Threadripper processor with gaming as a priority. Now here's a look at the operating behavior of the 9970X and 9980X, along with the 7970X and 7980X and Cinebench using the multi-core test. Again, the processors are being tested inside the Be Quiet Lightbase 900FX case with the Silverstone XE360 TR5 360mm AIO. The 9970X saw a peak operating temperature of 86 degrees with an average operating frequency of 4.9 GHz, and the previous generation 7970X also peaked at 86 degrees with an average operating frequency of 4.7 GHz, meaning the new Zen 5 model clocked on average 4% higher. Then switching over to the 64 core models, the 9980X ran at a peak temperature of just 74 degrees, while the 7980X reached 82 degrees. 
The 9980X also ran at an average clock frequency of 4.3 GHz, while the 7980X ran at 4 GHz, meaning the newer model clocked 8% higher. Now out of interest, I enabled the PBO setting to see just how high we could push those Cinebench numbers with a simple overclock, and predictably, the performance was boosted by 6%, achieving a score of 7,038 points. Of course, without any voltage tuning, which does risk compromising stability, not something most people will want to do in a professional setting, the PBO setting smashes power efficiency, pushing the EPS 12 volt rail power draw to an insane 492 watts. That's a 31% increase for an additional 6% performance. As expected, these new Zen 5 base Threadripper parts build upon what AMD started with Zen 4. And while it's great that platform compatibility has been maintained this time, I don't think many, if any, users are going to be upgrading from a Threadripper 7000 series part to one of these new 9000 processors. Instead, these new Zen 5 models will be a welcome release for anyone looking at buying into Threadripper now. You're getting up to 18% better performance at the same price, at least in the case of the 9980X. The 32-core 9970X was often a bit less impressive relative to the part it's replacing. And as a side note, the Intel competition to a part like the 9980X would be the Xeon W9-3595X, a CPU that we can't get our hands on. And frankly, we're not that interested in buying one since we have very little use for it and at a cost of at least $5,900 US just for the CPU, it's not very desirable given it is slower than the 9980X, often much slower. The W9-3595X is a 60-core processor that scores around 3,800 points in Cinebench 2024, making the 9980X around 75% faster. AMD claims up to 83% faster in their press deck, but either way, Intel gets crushed in this matchup while costing more and using more power. AMD also claims a 92% performance advantage in Autodesk Maya, 23% in Premiere Pro, 80% for After Effects, 108% for Corona, 68% for MATLAB, 41% for Chromium Compile, and 65% for Unreal Engine Compilation. And this lines up with testing done by Puget Systems, at least in the testing that overlaps. So I am confident in saying the Threadripper 9000 series annihilates the Intel competition. And look, we've been using the Threadripper 7980X on the ASUS Pro WS TRX50 Sage Wi-Fi motherboard here at Hardware Unboxed for roughly two years now. And in that time, we've used it to make every single video I've uploaded to the channel. So we've got a lot of experience using this platform and I'm happy to report the experience has been excellent. In my Threadripper 7000 review, I talked at length about the numerous issues we'd faced with the Threadripper 5000 series, stating just how poorly things had gone with the 5995WX. It was a very long and painful journey and in the end, we just gave up on the 5995WX, uh, calling it a huge disappointment. Thankfully, the 7980X experience was the complete opposite, a near flawless execution there. And I'm really expecting the same from the 9980X. We will be switching to this thing as our new sort of daily workhorse for editing all of our videos and yeah, doing all the stuff we do on the channel. Anyway, that is going to do it for our look at the new AMD Threadripper 9970X and 9980X. If you enjoyed this review, please do give it a like. Also, if you'd like to get more Hardware Unbox goodness, we have the Join button or Patreon. Either one of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content. And do I say the live stream? If I, it's good, it's worth, it's worth mentioning twice. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve, and I guess thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Both of those things.